It's 8 p.m. and we're following breaking news right now on Denver 7 News on Local 3. Commerce City Police say their officers were fired at as they were searching for a suspect in a deadly shooting. This is near Fairfax Park near the intersection of Fairfax and East 69th. We have team coverage out there tonight. We begin with Denver 7's Addie Guajardo. Addie. Well, Jessica, it's a very active scene. Police are still working to stabilize this area as they gather evidence. One thing we do know is that officers were shot at. Luckily, a veteran officer was shot in the sleeve and it didn't actually pierce any of his body parts. He's a little shaken up, but he's doing all right tonight. This is what we know so far. Police responded around 530 today, a few blocks down from where we're at right now to off to shots fired. When they arrived, they found one person dead. Then they confronted a person they believed may have been involved in an alley. While they were having a conversation with that person, another sus or a suspect opened fire on those officers, firing multiple shots. Six officers shot back at that suspect. That person is now at the hospital. His condition is unknown at this time. Police are now searching the scene to see if there's anyone else that was involved in this shooting. They say they're looking for they're looking to get a warrant to be able to get into one of the homes. They believe the suspect may have been inside, but still a very active scene. There's two separate investigations happening out here. The first investigation is the homicide that they responded to. The second investigation is now that officer involved shooting. But again, the good news tonight that officer was not injured. Now the chief of police did say tonight that this tonight was really supposed to be about officers coming together and talking to community members, mending a fractured relationship that obviously didn't happen tonight. But what we do want you to listen to is one of the witnesses, one of the one of the neighbors that heard when those shots were fired. I want you to take a listen to that right now. All of a sudden I heard a couple bangs. I thought I was someone banging outside. So I went upstairs and all of a sudden there's just a swarm of just cops just out front, like in our like driveway. I was walking out in the middle of the road to see what was happening down there and the shots fired and the officers started running towards me. So I ran back inside. They said, everybody get inside. Several agencies did respond to the scene tonight. It's why we're seeing an overwhelming amount of police presence out here tonight as they gather more evidence. And we'll bring you all the latest information as that comes into us. Reporting live in Commerce City, Addy Guardo, Denver 7. Complicated situation. Thank you, Addy. And also terrifying for residents there. Our Sloan Dickey is also live on scene. Sloan, you're hearing from residents there? Yeah, certainly hearing from residents and one very scary situation. Uh, a number of teams were practicing. One group that we were hearing from was a football team. Some parents were actually coming to hear if their kids were all right. Um, right behind us, there is a massive park. Uh, that's where several teams were practicing. If you can see right behind me, the police have gathered there. Uh, this is we did realize that the, the shooting happened in a back alley, but parents didn't know that. We actually didn't know that when we had arrived. We saw quite a commotion over by the fields. Uh, uh, the coaches and police officers trying to corral kids and make sure that they were safe. It turns out at this point that we know that uh, the, the, the children in that area are safe, uh, but it was quite a scary situation. The parents still have not spoken to their children at this point. Uh, we also heard from some of the neighbors, as did Addie, about uh, what, what actually happened. We heard that uh, there were several gunshots that were fired in a household. We heard from one member uh, of a household nearby who said that it kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, that was the message that was relayed to parents uh, from students on the field. They were, they were practicing and then they moved to a safe area. They didn't know what necessarily was going on. We're getting little bits of information. Uh, the parents that I spoke with have heard from their children and they say their children are safe, but quite a scary situation out here as we continue to learn what happened. Jessica. Good to hear that everyone is safe. Thank you, Sloan. And as you heard from Sloan, this is still a very fluid situation with new information coming in by the minute. We will have all of the latest information for you on the DenverChannel.com. Switching now to our weather and the rain continuing to create problems across our state. These new pictures are of a mudslide in Grand County along Highway 125. This is near the East Troublesome Fire Burn Scar. Let's send it to Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson now. Mike, storms are still moving across the state this evening. 
It's mostly in the form of rain, a little bit of thunder, but not too much right now. It's a gray start to the evening in the Denver area. This view from Westminster is how it looks at City Park and kind of a gloomy shot up here in the mountains from the Loveland ski area. So the flash flood watches have been lifted now and we do still have rain coming in, but nothing that's terribly heavy at the moment. Showers moving into the metro area you might get a rumble of thunder out of them. A little bit heavier to the north of us. Matter of fact, we're seeing some fairly good rain now up around Estes Park and over toward Red Feather Lakes, the Fort Collins area. This is part of a weather disturbance that's sliding across the region tonight. The flash flood watch does still continue until 10 o'clock up on the Cameron Peak burn scar and these troublesome burn scar. The other ones down toward Glenwood Springs have been lifted. And here are our headlines for tonight. We'll get rain and cool weather, lingering showers by morning clearing in the afternoon and a hotter and drier forecast coming up for the rest of this week. Thank you, Mike. The largest school district in Colorado announced today that the mask mandate is back. The fall school year policy goes into effect August 9th. Our Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo has the details and shows us how parents are reacting to the news. In less than three weeks, the halls of Denver Public Schools will once again buzz with life. And just like last year, masks are making a comeback. On Tuesday, DPS announced masks will be required for all students, staff, and visitors, regardless of their vaccination status. Masks are not required outside. I thought it was a good idea. Luis Ortega says requiring masks will help protect his seven-year-old son, Arian, from getting COVID, since the vaccine is only approved for kids 12 and older. Anything that's going to mitigate it from him getting sick, I think it's the best thing for him. Earlier this summer, the Ortega family tested positive for COVID-19, and Arian stayed with a family member, so he wouldn't get the virus. Luis admits masks are annoying, but it doesn't bother Arian. He doesn't want to leave the house sometimes without it because he's like, I don't want to get COVID. During an interview last week, DPS Superintendent Dr. Alex Marrero confessed it was a tough decision. It's been a tremendous amount of those who want to be masked universally and others are saying, please don't do this to my child or I'm not, I'm not going to send them in if you do this to my child. Many took to Facebook to voice their opinions on the DPS mask mandate. One person wrote, how stupid. This is not going to work out. Another complete insanity. But more people commenting supported the mandate. This is such good news. Another stated, homeschool if you don't like this decision. Sure, it's uncomfortable, but for a few hours, it's going to save your life, then I would say wear the mask. He's also encouraging parents to vaccinate their kids if they're eligible. All six of my kids that are vaccinated, nothing happened. They were all fine. I'm fine. My wife's fine. All my mother, my father, my brothers and sisters were all fine. Addy Guajardo, Denver 7. There is no uniform state guidance on masks, so we're keeping a running list of how individual front range districts are handling it. Denver and Westminster are the only districts to announce blanket mask mandates. Jeffco, Adams 12 and Aurora are requiring masks in some circumstances. Doug Coe, Littleton and several Colorado Springs districts will not require masks at all. Today, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio announced requirements for proof of vaccination to enter all restaurants, fitness centers and indoor entertainment venues. The police will take the policy will take effect over the next few weeks. Some businesses here in Colorado are already looking to do the same thing. The Boulder Theater and Fox Theater in Boulder will soon require its guests to provide proof of vaccination or a negative test result. The Aggie Theater in Fort Collins will do the same. You can also bring a negative test result taken within 72 hours if you're not vaccinated. The CEO says it wasn't an easy decision to make, but they're doing whatever they can to make sure they don't have to go back to limited capacities or social distancing requirements. It was a pretty crippling year and a half. If th this is a small step that we can take to keep our community safe and stay in business, it's a step that we are willing to take. Although the venues aren't yet requiring masks, they're highly encouraged even if you are vaccinated. The CEO says all of the staff is vaccinated and will be masked when working. I'm lucky to still be here because I thought I was going to die two times. Targeted and brutalized by Aurora police, a man seen on body cam video being pistol whipped by an officer shares his story with Denver 7. I mean, other other police officers doing it out there. I mean, I'm not the only one this happens to. I'm just fortunate to still be here and get it on camera. Heavy rain in the mountains and the Denver metro area. Just how long until we can see hotter and drier days.
Plus, as the metro grows, some are trying to hold on to its historical charm. It's amazing to look at this house and realize that these big stones, they came out here on a, a wagon behind horses. Coming up, how local leaders are trying to keep the past alive. It's really intended to be proactive and to uncover the great diversity of places that exist in our city that make our neighborhoods special.